So in my last experiment, they needed some potentiometers, and I was short. You know, these guys. Variable resistors, potentiometers, rheostats, pots, whatever you want to call them. Now, I needed some, and I was short. What could I do? The stores were all closed. It was late at night. I could have used that simple graphite method where you draw on a piece of paper and use that as your variable resistor, but the resistance range is nowhere near what I needed. I needed it a lot more sensitive and lower. So what I came up with was this. Simple salt water bottle. Now, normally if you put uh, two contacts into salt water, it'll almost read as if the full voltage goes through. And that's because there's not actually a load on it when you're checking with your uh, multimeter. But if you put a load on it, as, the, as it, the load consumes more and more watts, those watts have to pass through the water causing chemical reactions, which will block the, pr the, the proceeding reactions until the bubbles have cleared and the reaction has calmed down and the ions have come back. So what we, what we end up with is essentially a potentiometer that operates slightly differently, but what I've got here is a very thin wire attached to this bolt that I'm lowering and then another contact directly into the water. The surface area of the wire is what we're, we're, we're modifying here, to, or what we're playing with to increase our conductivity. As you can see, I go down. The further I go down, the, more, the, the less resistance there is and the more current gets through. Now, after it goes down, you'll see it bounce back up like this a bit, and that's because as it goes down, there's fresh, fresh surface area hitting the water. That fresh surface area takes a moment to, to allow the current through, which uh, increases the, the voltage, and then that quickly start, the reactions quickly start to uh, feed back and slow themselves down again, and then it finds its baseline after some time. And now if I keep going, the load here requires quite a bit of load to turn on the light, because it's actually two loads. There's a light and a relay on there. So, let's get her on down here, and there we go, we're, we're starting to flicker. These relays are also really flickery, they don't, they're not very, very stable, but this, this potentiometer method itself is also quite flickery. I call it flickery because there's not a better word I can think of for it at the moment. <laughs> there we go, and we've hit the, the sweet spot. I can just keep lowering it. Or I can adjust it back up. Now it's nowhere near as stable. Stable is probably a better word, but it's nowhere near as stable as uh, the standard potentiometers. Uh, these operate more on the distance that it has to pass through an object, whereas this one operates on surface area and chemical reaction block blocking. So it's it's quite a bit different, but it ends up with a similar effect if you're looking for an analog, very simple hack way of making your own potentiometer.